Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Christian Smedberg, and welcome to TCA. Good morning. I'm Andy Turner. Welcome. So uh, this morning, we're coming to you live uh, from Mooresville, North Carolina, as we normally do. We got some special guests on this week's TCA, yeah. um, which we're going to cut to later on. Uh, first, just wanted to let everyone know we're well, moving well, stuff around in our showroom a lot today. Going on. It shouldn't be too noisy for us today, but there's a lot going on as we are now... Two weeks. Two weeks away two from, weeks the away retool, from the tour. retool tour. So we're setting up our showroom, bringing some new technology in. You'll see some forklifts. Hopefully not hear too many forklifts in the background. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what's going on uh, here in our showroom. So uh, we're going to get started. And, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to bring up, Andy, was that, uh, you know, I think yesterday was kind of a special day around here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday was uh, my co-host Andy Turner's birthday. So yeah, Andy, another trip around the sun. Andy, happy birthday! Thank you so uh, much. Yep. Yeah, so everybody out there, hey, if you're watching live, wish Andy a happy birthday. Yeah. All right, he yeah. got a lot yesterday. He got a lot of love yesterday, but give him some love this morning, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll get we'll get going with TCA. All right. Well, that was fun. All right. So uh, Andy, what's going on in the industry this week? Man, I've been reading a lot of stuff. I can see we got a couple people watching this live, by the way. Andreas, our number one fan, is out there. Um, if you, if, you're, if we're having any audio issues, let us know. Cause last yeah. week we had some audio <laughs> issues. Um, so yeah, I've been reading up on the industry, and actually, I was just talking to uh, to Christian earlier. Uh, there are new voices that are speaking uh, to our the trend, the uptrend in housing, and they're speaking on why. I think that people still are grasping why are we seeing this. Uh, this segment of our industry why are we uh why are we seeing more houses being built why are we seeing more houses being sold but uh some new voices are speaking out including the uh, last week on friday i think it was the the ceo of zillow spoke out a little bit right. and uh and gave at his uh at their quarterly earnings um press conference he he mentioned um a few things uh as to why he thought people were moving into single family homes we've talked about that over the past few weeks that we have that yeah. housing overall might be a little bit down still but but the single family home is that's going up and, and the that's new where construction and the new it. construction yep. and also um, uh, just housing sales in general and and so we're seeing a lot of remodeling we're seeing a lot of new construction uh, people are moving out of urban areas which is good for us because yeah. we we cater to those markets absolutely um, the interesting thing though was that the uh, the CEO of Zillow um, is suspecting that perhaps Zoom conference meetings and the and companies' new work from home policies are contributing to folks wanting to move out of the cities. Now this is an interesting take, but it makes a lot of sense. It does make sense. It's something I haven't thought about, right? But it makes yep. a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, uh, people are are working from home, and when you are working from home, um, uh, well, there's a lot of thoughts to that. But one of the things that you're you're doing your zoom meetings and there's so many distractions kind of like today where we've got all these noises in the background <laughs> but uh but you have a lot of distractions on your zoom conference calls and people people want um they want it to be quiet uh, their idea of privacy now is different they don't want potentially somebody that's, that they don't even know walking by their window yep, and, sure and absolutely things like that uh, not to mention if, if uh, someone's uh, living in an apartment and you have a lot of noise right uh, on the other side of your wall mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be on a zoom meeting when that's happening well and sure. also you know when you were before when you were living in an apartment um, and you go to work you were going to work you weren't there all the time now right. now right. you need a, you need other things you need to be able to walk out of your house perhaps as they say in the, yep. the yard right. is replacing the park <laughs> yeah and you're back Backyard, backyard is now, is is now the, the, park, the park, right? And commutes. Uh, people aren't concerned so much with commutes, so there's not as much of a desire to live in the city where maybe you walk or ride a bike to work or you have a short, uh, maybe light rail or subway That's trip. Right. Uh, commutes aren't a big deal, so so they're, they're wanting to, to get out of the urban areas. So all of these dynamics, um, which, I mean, we haven't... We've talked about the, the need for new construction, but these are just more dynamics on mm -hmm. top of what we've talked about yeah. already. Um, that are leading to a heightened uh, housing industry, which is great for the woodworking industry. And I think we're still trying to put our finger or a pin in exactly why things are happening, but it could just be all of these things. That's, you know? that's Every, right. Everything's contributing. Yep, that's right. So, uh, so we've talked about well, 
one of the uh, main reasons why our industry uh, does great with when the housing industry is doing well, new construction, is uh, cabinetry, molding, mm -hmm. and millwork. Mm -hmm. Um, so this morning we want to dive a little bit deeper in that. We have some special guests, as I uh, as I said before. Uh, we also have some some. What Andy? Do you know what kind of species this is? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> Andy knows what kind of species this is. Um, so this is we got some alder boards right here. So everybody watching uh, who knows the industry at least a little bit or a little bit familiar with hardwoods knows that alder is predominantly grown or really only grown uh, here in North America on the west. West Coast. Um, and this is an area that produces hardwoods, but many times is overshadowed by East Coast or Eastern hardwoods. Um, there's an entire hardwoods association that is uh, based around Western, Western hardwoods, hardwoods yeah. yeah, called the Western Hardwoods Association. Mm -hmm. um, and so earlier this week, we were able to uh, interview um, member and past president Mike Lipke and also our agent who's also, also a member, member right? uh, Jeff McGuire. So uh, we wanted to play you this video and uh, and kind of introduce you and, and maybe make you a little bit more familiar with the association, the Western Hardwoods Association and Western Hardwoods as some okay. species. Yep. Okay, so we are joined today by Mike Lipke and Jeff McGuire with the Western Hardwood Association. Guys, thanks for joining us. Mike, can you tell us a bit, what is the Western Hardwood Association? Sure, the Western Hardwood Association was formed as a trade organization to promote hardwoods that are grown in the Western part of the United States and provide advocacy for producers, uh, primary producers, sawmills, things like that, uh, secondary producers like uh, my company, Trillium Pacific Millwork, and distributors and brokers, people who buy and sell hardwood lumber on the West Coast. And uh, we do a lot of uh, advocacy with uh, uh, political uh, action committees and uh, basically are trying to be the voice of the hardwood industry from the West Coast. Jeff, what would you say are the uh, main benefits of the association? What I've found and what I've been told is the benefits are three. Network, network, and network. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the opportunity to mingle with your competitors, uh, with your vendors, with your suppliers, to learn about the politics across the country regarding hardwood and spend time with researchers, for instance, like the guys from Oregon State University. For instance, this next Tuesday at noon Pacific time, the Sustainable Northwest Wood Group will be doing a virtual conference on Oregon White Oak. Then two days later, the Western Hardwood will be holding its annual convention, also as a virtual affair, and featured this year will be the latest on log supply, rules and regulations, domestic and international markets, CLT, and much more. Huh, okay. Oh, nice, nice. So, so Jeff, you just said, uh, you mentioned specifically the Oregon white oak. You know, we're, we're all in the wood industry. Uh, we, we talk about this once in a while. I guess the one that has been in this uh, industry the, the shortest amount of time is Christian. But, uh, but you know, we, we, we know people across the country, that, that, and we know that everybody does things a little differently. Everyone uses uh, regional or maybe some local uh, wood, and, it, and it, it varies. It's different across the country. Could you speak a little more about uh, what specifically, what kind of hardwoods are coming out of the West? Well, Mike, you probably have a good hand. Or Mike, that. yeah, that could go to either of you. So I'm sorry. Well, the predominant species is alder. Um, okay. Yeah, and then uh, PC maple, Pacific Coast maple is probably the second uh, highest species. Alder is a great uh, species and is, uh, you can make alder look like almost anything else. So it's used a lot uh, all over the world. Um, a lot of it's exported to China. And then there are many other minor species. Uh, Oregon white oak is probably the third most predominant species from the West. Um, there's a Western walnut that's uh, darker in color and, um, you know, looks much different from Eastern Walnut. Um, and then you have things like Myrtlewood and um, 
the drone, the drone, and some of the other uh, really minor species that uh, that are beautiful. Uh, you got well, juniper isn't a hardwood; it's a softwood, but uh, it looks a lot like a hardwood. Um, uh, so there, are, those are the main species that that are out of the west. But the, the two big ones are alder and PC maple for mm -hmm. sure. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Gotcha. So, Jeff, you had mentioned the Western Hardwood Virtual Convention. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that, and what is it? Well, sure. My company, McGuire Machinery Group, along with the Weinig Group, have been members and sponsors of the WHA for years. And we've been fortunate to work with many of the members with their machines. And together with Weinig and our group, we supply machines for the hardwood industry, uh, which includes solid wood machines, rip saws, chop saws, molders, sanders, CNCs, and finger joiners. And I think our line of power, I'm doing a commercial, it sounds like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> our, our line of power lock molders spin the heads at 12,000 RPM. And from listening to our customers and competitors, we feel like that gives us the best finish in the industry. Um, but the, the convention really, as I mentioned earlier, talks all facets of the hardwood business and one of the things Mike was saying was the advocacy groups. We have um, two or three people, uh, Mike, I think it's Mike Snow with the Hardwood Export Council comes and talks to us and then we've got a gal that's involved with the political action committee. Mike, what's her name? Yeah, Dana Cole. Dana Coles comes and talks to us about what's going on in Washington to help uh, with the advocacy for the, the hardwood groups as well. And then there's also things, um, we talk about CLT, which is cross laminated timber. That comes up and we've actually have on our winding staff, we have an expert on that based in Southern California that's been to the meetings as well. So there's quite a bit of stuff that happens. All right. Now I will, we'll have some uh, information on the uh, actual virtual convention linked in the description of this video. So people can go to uh, a website and uh, check out more information if they're interested. Um, and the uh, what, when is that taking place again? Yeah, it's on Thursday the 13th. Okay. And uh, I might mention there's a pretty cool guitar that's being raffled off. Uh, oh, nice. Made by uh, Gibson Guitar and, oh. uh, in Montana. And uh, the back and sides are Western Walnut that was uh, manufactured and donated by Gobi Walnut, who's a Hardwood Association member here in Portland. And uh, it's really a pretty guitar. The, if you go to the Western Hardwood Association YouTube channel, there's a little video on there of one of, uh, one of my employees playing the guitar. Uh, it's really a sweet sounding guitar and looks nice. And uh, that's just one of the, that's the main raffle prize, but there's also a silent auction going on. And the proceeds from the auction go toward a scholarship fund uh, where we give out uh, scholarships every year to uh, college students at uh, OSU, U of O, uh, Washington State, mm -hmm. um, University of Washington, different colleges around the Northwest. So the money goes to support a great cause and uh, support our industry. That's great. And I guess if it's coming out of Montana, that must be an acoustic guitar, right? We're not talking about Les Paul? Right. It is It is an acoustic guitar. However, yeah. it has an electric pickup on it. Okay. So, Very nice. Uh, you can plug an amp into it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing, Jeff, that you mentioned, or maybe Mike, you mentioned it, was this uh, sustainable wood story on, the, uh, on Oregon's white oak. Um, what exactly is that? And how can people kind of learn more about it? Jeff, you want to talk about it or I can? The conference next week, uh, is my understanding, it will provide an overview of Oregon White Oaks historic range, where it grows, its place in the ecosystem, the factors leading to its decline, how forest managers and mills apply the working forest concept, an Oregon White Oak habitat restoration initiative, and how architects and designers in our region are learning to better utilize this beautiful local hardwood. And what's interesting is one of our members that I referred, referred to earlier, Xena Forest Products, at last year's meeting, gave us a tour of their 1,300 acre 
FSC certified forest land, and they specialize in Oregon white oak, western big leaf maple, and Oregon ash. So that is my understanding is that's going to be a virtual conference that will be happening next Tuesday. So, it, well, what is, uh, I guess, what, Mike, what would you say the draw is then of Oregon white oak? Well, it's really a beautiful wood. It's uh, shaded differently than eastern white oak. It's got a little bit more brown tones in it, and uh, so it's maybe a little bit warmer looking. Mm -hmm. It also has, I would say, more character in it than eastern white oak, so you'll see more uh, burl in it, and you'll see, uh, you know, you'll see a lot more uh, grain variation. It's not quite as straight grain, but it, uh, it's still, it's just a really beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, wood. It's used a lot in flooring. Um, it's probably one of the prettiest floors around that I've seen, uh, Oregon white oak, and um, very versatile species and uh, it's you know getting better all the time as we get better at uh, growing it and milling it um, I think it's it's gaining popularity really a nice looking wood nice yeah I, I know that um, you know most of the time when we talk about species coming out of the west it's it's all about alder right but um, it, re it sounds like you guys have quite a few species that are coming out um, that are sustainable that and can actually make an impact, um, you know, anywhere in the country, not just regionally there where you are. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say, um, you know, we're, we're trying to grow the market for some of the lesser known species like Oregon white oak and Western walnut, uh, madrone and uh, myrtle wood, some of those different species. Uh, alder is kind of taken off and, and PC Maple have taken off all on their own pretty well. So right. uh, we're trying to grow the market for the other items, but uh, uh, you know, they're all beautiful woods. And um, like I say, as more people have gotten involved, the uh, ability to manufacture uh, high quality wood for people to use and whatever project they have has gotten better and better uh, every year. Good. Very good. So anything uh, you guys would like to uh, close off with as far as, uh, you know, points about the association that we may have missed? Jeff, you good? I'll defer to Mike. Mike's a past president of the association. Uh, okay. Wow. Well, so. I think what Jeff, what Jeff said about it being uh, a great networking tool um, for businesses is definitely true. That was the main reason why I joined the association way back when, and I've definitely gotten a lot of benefits from networking with other people here in the Northwest. And, um, and I think the, the quality of the information that we have at our convention is really amazing. Um, I, I, I enjoy it every year. I always get something valuable out of it. Um, and I think our speaker lineup this year is as good as any of the other years that we've had it and there's going to be just a huge amount of valuable information that people can take away from it and it's well worth the time i think uh and uh you know i'd encourage everyone to to sign up and um you know take some time and listen to some of the presentations they they really are uh some of the best around for sure very good and and I would add, I, I would give a big shout out to Dave Schweitzer, who is our, he's called the secretary, but he's kind of the executive director of the association. He keeps the board focused and moving to plan these events. And I second what Mike said, that this event coming up is going to be a great one. Yeah. Dave does a great job, really does a great job. Yeah. Well, we will put links to uh, the association webpage and more information about the virtual convention that's coming up uh, in the description of this video. Guys, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. All right. So, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, again, Jeff McGuire and Mike Lipke from the Western Hardwoods Association. Andy, so they got some stuff going on this week. Yes. They have their virtual their virtual annual convention on the 13th 
and their sustainable wood stories of Oregon white oak is actually happening today. Oh, nice. so it's online uh, so today. So tune in to see that. Yep. Tune in to see that. Where do we? Um, where we'll do you put, go to watch that? We will put uh, links in the description of this video um, that uh, you can go to learn more about the Western Hardwoods <coughs> Association and uh, and their virtual events that they're putting on. Uh, so great organization, really. And there's a there's a lot of good species coming out of the West. Um, that is that are really um, making a mark here in the market even here on the East Coast. Yeah, sure. I mean we have some alder right here. Now, there you go. <laughs> so uh, all right, so we are as Andy said, we're two weeks away from the retool tour. A lot going on. A uh, lot yeah. going on. Um, for more information about the retool tour, go to wineholzer.com simple, right? www.wineholzer.com uh, there's the presentation schedule is on there. There's locations. locations. There's a registration form. If you want more information, sign up. Yeah, please sign up. We, we understand, you know, in a meeting that we had yesterday with some of our agents across the country, that, you know, things still are unsettled as far as how this might look. Uh, different states have different rules That's right. um, as far as uh, any sort of a mass gathering. And so we, from the very beginning, we knew that this could be a predominantly uh, virtual event. Yep. And, it's, and it's starting to look more, I'm assuming that. So we're working to, to try to get our streaming capabilities better. That's right. Uh, we'll, uh, we continue to, 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 to work on it. You saw that we had some streaming capabilities today even. Um, some issues today. But uh, we're working to make that better. But even if you plan to attend virtually, please register. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and register just to stay in the know. Tell us what you're interested in. Um, one of the things that uh, quite a few of the locations are doing are also having private virtual events off uh on the off days from well the live and, stream. and even private scheduled uh in-person events absolutely so instead right. of it being a mass gathering they may have a schedule where you could you can make an appointment to come by and see one of the machines if you see something that's, that's on the schedule of, mm -hmm. of events that's that's at a location that's close to you you want to see that in person uh reach out to the location uh, try to schedule an appointment. Yep. Reach absolutely. out to your regional, uh, your regional representative. Reach out to your uh, the local dealer. Uh, they can get that on the calendar for you. So, the one thing about the retool tour that is uh, that's just full steam ahead is this live stream schedule. Mm -hmm. So this live stream schedule we got packed with 50 plus demos, uh, all live streamed all week long. We have some in English and also some in Spanish. Yep. Um, so check out the schedule. Wineandculture.com has the complete live stream schedule for that week. Again, it's in two weeks, uh, two week time. We'll be streaming it online. It'll, yeah, and we're, we're going to be, be streaming each location. So we were able to work out the travel arrangements, and uh, it's not it's not as easy as it would have been in, right. uh, in past months to get to, to get to these locations. But we are still going to make it. So if you're like me and you're a big time Andy Turner fan tune in because he'll be on the live stream almost every day that almost week. every day almost except every we day. did have one issue with uh with timing so uh, uh, I'll, almost I'll almost every them, day yeah. yeah that's all right so uh yeah so anyway um we look forward to it check out more information on the website wineandculture.com that's the retool tour website